Okay, so this is this is this is a big one, and it's fucking cold here on the bay. So let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. So, I'm still to Bermuda mm -hmm. actually from here from, from Norfolk. Oh, you have okay. Yeah. So well, mm -hmm. all right. Well, that's basically the first part. First, like, I've never actually started this trip from Annapolis before, which is all up the bay. So in one sense, we have like the whole way down the bay to get the crew and everybody organized, um, and we have you know that's going to take 18 to 24 hours, uh, and then. Yep. Right. The rum line, the rum line from Norfolk to Tortola is this way, obviously. But mm. we're not going to do that because if you get down in this hole over here, you get easterly trades and you get stuck. And then there's a current along the north coast of Puerto Rico that sets to the west. So my dad has done that from experience. You get you stuck over here and you wind up. I think Lee he did a catamaran trip and wound up in St. Thomas because they just were sick of beating okay. and a catamaran <laughs> couldn't beat. So yeah. usually I aim for sort of that <clears throat> waypoint, basically 30 north, 65 west from the mouth mm. of the Chesapeake. So that's about what is that? 120 miles south of Bermuda. <clears throat> Let's check. So you're almost aiming, you're almost aiming at Bermuda. Yeah, but you don't have to quite go all the way out to Bermuda and we'll be getting weather forecasts along the way out here So I might you know conservatively Well, first of all when we cross the Gulf Stream You're gonna get set to the east a little bit anyway So I might conservatively mm. aim sort of in the middle here And then if the weather is shaping up that it looks like we can cut the corner a little bit I still don't like to go due south until I get out to 65 mm. because then if you get out here You've got a beam reach the whole way and that's a really nice. What is that? That's five 10 that's 600 that's like an 800 mile beam reach which is super nice mm. so usually this is like the gnarly stuff once you get out to 65 you're usually clear by the time the cold fronts get that far out they're they're much dissipated than they are in the gulf stream here along the coast yeah so that's the typical routing plan so like when i'm explaining this to crew i would i would give them the chart briefing tonight and say that's our waypoint so we'll do this in two legs norfolk to you know the, the theme song for Norfolk? We don't smoke, we don't drink. Norfolk, Norfolk. <laughs> um, anyway, Norfolk to this waypoint at 3065, mm -hmm. and then it's just a straight shot. You can even go almost a little bit, 6430. Anagata's on 6430. So as you're approaching down here, you want to be 6430. If you get over to 64 even, if you get over to 64 up here, you'll have mm. an even better angle all the way down. Yeah. Because we want to ideally come in the Virgin Islands, like I was telling you the other night, keep Anagata to port, don't run into it. Um, keep oh, sure. Scrub Island and the east end of Tortola to starboard, and then if we get down there early, we can stop in Virgin Gorda, like we talked about before. Yeah, that sounds great. <clears throat> so that's the basic route, and we'll look at the weather now to talk about like why we're doing that particular route. Mm. You've seen this before, this is Weather 4D. Um, just to give some perspective, I'll turn the, where is it, mm, map only. So that's our, that's the digital route that we just talked about. That waypoint south of Bermuda and then straight down to Tortola. So this gives you the perspective on the map. If we turn the GRIB file back on, this was GFS 6 o'clock Zulu, so that's GMT. We've got our green boat is our actual position now because this is connected to the GPS the red boat is the estimated position along the route for our for this boat for the Swan 59 so this may be a little faster than you guys but it'll give you a good idea it may. It may. <laughs> remains to be seen <laughs> so if I just animate this we can just watch how the picture emerges and this is this is a 10 day forecast so like you can we can really only plan three days out but it's fun to see how it animates over 10 days and there's some pretty gnarly stuff in this. So we'll just hit play here and animate this. The time's at the top. That's really fast. So there goes our red boat. Calm as we go through the Gulf Stream. Picking up some southwesterlies ahead of this next cold front. There's another low that spins up. We're racing it away. This guy is super gnarly. But this is like yeah. a week and a half away. So that's gonna change. I mean, remember up in Newfoundland how often this stuff changes. Yeah, now yeah. this is on a loop, so this shows uh, shows us going along here. And you can this is really cool. You can optimize the efficiency of the boat polar. So like you're plugging in the boat's polar into this, and you can set all right. Well, there's no way I'm gonna be able to sail to 100% efficiency, so mm -hmm. I set it at 
So this is usually a conservative estimate. Like I should be able to match or beat this. And you've got the same on Eastbjorn, you've got the Swan 48 Polar in there. You should be able to, if you set it at 80% efficiency, you should be able to match or beat it so that you know you're not gonna get stuck behind something. Yep. So if we analyze this more closely in, let's look at what we're looking at tomorrow on the Chesapeake and why we need to get at least get down the bay tomorrow. So we've got a front approaching tonight on a grib file, this shaded blue represents precipitation. So gribs don't actually indicate where the cold fronts and warm fronts are, but you can interpolate where they are by looking at where the precipitation is. So if I put this in context and zoom out, this is very clearly a cold front. You can see a pressure gradient here um, and there's a high pressure behind it. It's not really associated with a low, it's just a cold front. So we move this forward, kind of a weak cold front goes through tonight. This is now 11.30 p.m. And where we are now, the wind shifts to the northwest. And we're at our position, it's showing 14 to 19 northwest. As we zoom ahead, you can see this steeper pressure gradient here, which is giving us a lot of wind offshore. But if we leave tomorrow at 1 o'clock, that's going to get us down the bay in 15 to 17 knots, pretty much from the north, northeast maybe. So we may be jiving down the bay. Hmm. But, um, I mean, that'll, that'll be, if you really want to be brave, that'll be a spinnaker run down the bay if you want it. Then we'll come offshore, put this in context again, we've got a high pressure, this is the high pressure that built in behind that cold front, which is now way out here. And we've got northeasterlies in the Gulf Stream out here, which people tend to think is like, oh, we can't go in the Gulf Stream if it's northeast, because the current is setting to the, setting to the northeast, but it's only 15 knots. Hmm. And by the time we get out there, it's gonna be even less. So now we're down to nine knots, how <laughs> you like that? Eight knots gusting to seven. That's weird. <laughs> so we're in the middle of this high pressure and then there's another low that forms out here. This is Bermuda, Bahamas, forms along that cold front. And that's pretty common this time of year for these lows to spin up and form along this cold front. And that's what WRI was talking about yesterday, that mm. they're gonna monitor this for tropical development. But that should be long gone by the time we get out there. And even so, we still have the option to say, okay, fuck this, we're going back. Mm. So we're gonna come out in the Gulf Stream going to be probably motoring through the Gulf Stream, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but we'll want to burn our diesel fuel at the beginning here because we need to, once you get out across the Gulf Stream, you tend to have stabler weather. We want to get away from the coast. So we'll burn all our diesel up here. Now we've got another low that's centered way up here, like in Ontario or Quebec. And that's going to give us some southwesterlies on the front side of that. And we'll be sailing in those for a little while. This is now Monday, so we're starting to get into that region of like, okay, we can't really trust the forecast, but I like to look at this and see, is there anything scary in the long term uh, or not? So that looks pretty good, light upwind sailing. I'm gonna shoot us out to the east. Then we've got this so big good. high pressure ridge, and this is where it's, it's supposed to be really cold here next week. This is that Arctic blast that Arctic the news people are calling it. Yeah. yeah. Your kind of weather, nice. Viking weather. Oh yeah, that'd be good. And uh, bicycles and a beard. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but that that's why I don't really, if we delay, that's gonna be pretty gnarly crossing the Gulf Stream. 30, that's, I mean, sustained 30 knots in there. Oh yeah. So that's, yeah. that's, that's why I wanna fun. get out ahead of that. And then once we're clear of that, then we've got pretty nice northeasterlies. We'll be able to get east and then this, this is now a week from today, which is like, you can, it'll be fun to see what happens with this. But at the moment, it's just kind of fun to watch this little storm brew up. I mean, it is like getting pretty gnarly there. Oh. That's 50 knots, those, those triangles. Arrows, triangles yeah. Yeah. Yeah, tri you never want to see triangles on a grid file. <laughs> no. And that, I mean, that's a proper freaking storm. Yep. That's, a, that's a gnarly nor'easter. So we want to be down in the tropics by then. Like, yep. fuck that. But again, it'll be fun to see if that, you know, this is now 10 days out. I guarantee you that's not going to look like that next week. Yep. There's no way. It It'll always be changes. a few days early, maybe. Could change yeah. either way. Exa well, exactly. So, and we always have the option to stop in Bermuda. That's the other reason we aim for this waypoint. It's like we have a bailout. If something, that's if true, we get yeah. a late season tropical storm or something, we can say, screw it, we're going to Bermuda. Mm. So that kind of hedges your bets on like tropical weather. Because if you take the rum line, then getting back to Bermuda is really hard. But if you aim for Bermuda, you're only adding 100, 100 to 200 miles. 
and you're making for a much more pleasant and safer passage because you can bail if you need to. Yeah. 